send a special thanks and shout out to Community Ford Lincoln, a certified Lincoln Black Label dealer in Bloomington, Indiana, for allowing me to come out and film this 2008 Lincoln Navigator Elite Limited Edition. Alright, first a little quick test drive video clip before we get into the main review. Acceleration is pretty brisk for a car or a vehicle of this size. And starting out with our test drive, we're just on an in, in-town driving road. It's pretty quiet, pretty smooth. The steering feedback is really good. Overall, it's very comfortable, it's very refined, easy to drive. Hello everyone. Today, let's take a detailed, in-depth walk-around look at this absolutely stunning 2008 Lincoln Navigator. This Navigator is incredibly equipped with a $5,460 optional Elite package, which includes power to point running boards, power moonroof, so you've also got the rear view camera, THX surround sound with GPS navigation, and the rear seat entertainment system. In addition to the Elite package, here's some more of the optional equipment shown on this vehicle. Accompanying the redesign for the 2007 model year for the first time an extended wheelbase Navigator L with a 14.7 inch longer overall length and a 12 inch longer wheelbase was introduced to compete against the Cadillac Escalade ESV. The standard wheelbase we are reviewing is shown in black clear coat and it features the two-tone stone black premium leather interior with figured ebony wood trim and contrast piping. And this Navigator is four-wheel drive and for the first time since its introduction in 1998, it no longer uses a two-speed transfer case found in the Expedition, but rather has been demoted to a single-speed transfer case that lacks low gearing. The Navigator features a wheelbase of 119 inches and an overall length of 208.4 inches, a 9-inch ground clearance, and for those interested in off-road specs, the Navigator features a 22.4 degree approach angle, 21.7 degree departure angle, and a 19.2 degree ramp breakover angle. Power comes from Ford's modular 5.4 liter 3 valve single overhead cam 24 valve Triton V8 engine. It creates 300 horsepower at 5000 RPM, 365 pound feet of torque at 3750 RPM. And with the heavy duty trailering package, this Navigator features a gross vehicle weight rating of 7800 pounds and can tow 8,800 pounds and features a 1,750 pound payload capacity. And while not at all a performance vehicle with a curb weight uh, sitting around 6,203 pounds, it wouldn't be a review without performance specs. So this Navigator is good for 0 to 60 in 8.9 seconds with a 0 to 100 mile per hour time in 25.7 seconds. Quarter mile is reached in 16.6 seconds at 84 miles per hour with a top speed limited to 108 miles per hour. And the Navigator features a 28 US gallon fuel capacity, it consumes 7.1 gallons per 100 miles driven, and features an estimated total driving range of 392 miles. EPA fuel economy estimates are 12 miles per gallon city, 18 miles per gallon highway, 14 miles per gallon combined. On my 15 mile mixed driving test, I achieved 14.4 miles per gallon. And the sole available transmission is a ZF Source 6 speed 6 HP 26 automatic with overdrive and manual shift capability. 2008 would be the last year of the ZF gearbox as 2009 would introduce Ford's own 6-speed 6 6R80 6 automatic. Alright, we're still driving and oh, and in my opinion still remain the same. It doesn't feel like you're piloting an almost 6,000 pound vehicle. The steering feedback is really, really good. It's real tight and responsive, even at lower speeds. We're traveling about 45 miles per hour. We still have some city traffic, but overall this vehicle rides really, really nice. Still based on the Expedition's T1 body-on-frame platform based on the F-Series pickup, the 2007 model year marked the major redesign of the Navigator and 2008 would introduce more options and equipment features. 
Looking around the rear, typical of a large SUV, the rear styling is bland and plain. However, using design features from the Ford Fusion Base Lincoln MKZ, the LED wing tail lights which bisect out of the rear liftgate, curve cleanly into the rear quarter panels. They are trimmed in chrome and create a contrast between the paint and lights. The two-piece glass gate rear door continues beginning from 1997 all the way to the current model year. Along the profile, especially with the monochromatic package, this navigator looks clean and tidy with minimal chrome trim, save for the window trim and the badging. And steering is vehicle speed sensitive variable rate power assisted rack and pinion. This navigator is equipped with a $1,495 optional 20 inch 7 spoke chrome aluminum wheels. Tires are Yokohama Geolander HT P27555R20s and brakes are four wheel disc brakes with ABS, roll stability control and advanced track traction control. And yes I did do this review in the pouring rain. And looking up front is where the Navigator really stood out. This generation was definitely a love it, hate it look as it was drastically different from the more conservatively styled first and second generation vehicles. Going for Lincoln's heritage styling theme, the Navigator design inspired thoughts of the Lincoln Star logo. New multifaceted chrome headlamps featured xenon high intensity discharge projector beams and integrated the turn indicators and driving lights. The most bold styling feature was the 1963 Continental-esque chrome egg crate grille. Stainer was a large chrome plinth on the hood and chrome lower bumper grills. Thankfully, the monochromatic package cleans this up with body color elements, save the headlamps, and main grille. I happen to love this style, and inside continues the same heritage theming. Alright, here we're accelerating on an interstate acceleration ramp to get onto the highway. I'm not going as fast as I normally would because there is traffic in front of me. However, getting up to 60 miles per hour seems very effortless. And here we are on the open road. This is uh, just a large interstate that runs in between Bloomington. And on the open road is where the Navigator really shines. The ride is very smooth, quiet. The steering is very, it tightens up at higher speeds. So there's a lot less play in it. You do hear some wind buffeting, but overall it's a nice experience. All right, now let's take a look inside. Now we don't have smart key access, but we do have keyless remote entry. And we've also got Ford's keypad entry system. And pulling the door handle open also deploys the power running boards. And inside is a very nice interior with the Lincoln Continental-esque dual cowl instrument panel. You've also got two-tone leather seats and light figured ebony wood trim. This is the light stone interior. You have chrome and satin nickel accents. Power heated, automatic folding and automatic dimming side view mirrors. And the side view mirrors also integrate turn repeaters. Moving down you do have automatic front windows, power windows and power door locks. Chrome Lincoln insignia premium THX audio system, power adjustable pedals with memory, eight-way power driver and passenger seat. The driver's seat also features two-way lumbar support and two driver memory settings. Automatic light controls with fog lamp control. You've also got your instrument panel light dim, electrically tilt steering column, it does not telescope. All right, and taking a closer look at the seats, as you can see here, it is the light stone with the black perforated inserts. You've also got the black stitching and contrast piping. The seats overall are very comfortable and very supportive. Alright, and let's pan through the interior and show more details. Light stone leather trimmed steering wheel with dark ebony accents, satin nickel accents. On the left side of the steering wheel you have your cruise controls as well as your fan speed control. On the right hand side you have your audio controls, voice controls, and temperature controller. Classic heritage themed instrument cluster with large tachometer and speedometer and auxiliary gauges up top. You've also got a small dot matrix LCD readout for the trip computer. 
Pretty typical of Fords of this era. It is backlit in white LED. Overall, it's a pretty comprehensive trip computer. And taking a look over the top of the dash. Down the center console, you have two air vents framed by a square analog clock. You've also got the THX three speaker array speakers at the top of the dashboard. Touchscreen display with six disc CD changer, GPS navigation, AM FM, Sirius XM satellite radio, You've also got various menu buttons on either side of the screen. Moving down, controls for your three zone climate control. You've got driver, passenger, and rear climate. Up front is a single speed fan control, but the rear passengers also have their own fan and temperature controls as well. It's controls for the front fan there, controls for the rear fan here. And on either side, you have your controls for front heated and ventilated seats, mode control, and rear climate control button. Moving down, you have your trip computer buttons, stability control, and your lift gate release. And down below still, you have your 4x4 controls, ashtray with cigar lighter, large front cup holders, and a large leather wrapped shift knob accented with chrome. Inside the armrest is leather wrapped and conceals deep storage with audio auxiliary inputs. Overall, the Navigator, even for 2008, is a very nice, very well-equipped place to be. Very high quality of materials and build quality. You have an automatic dimming rearview mirror. And another nice party trick is the rearview mirror. Actually conceals the rearview camera. It does feature stationary guidance lines. Overhead, you have front reading lights. You've also got your control for your rear vent windows, as shown here. One button controls both sides. And your sunroof controls. Sunglasses storage at the aft part of the console. Overhead on the driver's side sun visor, you have three channel home league universal garage door opener. And all sun visors feature lighted illuminated vanity mirrors. They are nice wide sun visors that slide out on extension rails. And they've also got a secondary visor that swings out. Which is a really, really nice touch. Alright, let's take a look at the rear seats. Of course, this vehicle has three rows of seating, so let's go ahead and take a look at the third row first. Releasing the head restraint is the first step in releasing the seat back for rear seat entry. Then there's printed instructions on the seat back. Just lift this handle. And the seat tips and folds forward. It is assisted on a hydraulic strut. And entry to the third row seat is very easy. The third row seat is a power fold 50, 50 or 60 40 split folding seat with the head restraints on the outboard seats. Two tone leather seating continues for three passengers. Cup holders, overhead ventilation, and lights are all back here. And taking a look at the second row seat, the door cards are similar in style to the front doors with satin nickel and chrome accents, accent stitching. This vehicle is equipped with the optional. 60-40 split folding bench seat. Standard was twin captain chairs. You do have height adjustable head restraints on the outboard seats with an integral head restraint. Two-tone leather seating. Overhead illumination. Overhead vents. Perforated leather inserts on the outboard seats. And looking overhead, you do have Lincoln's overhead rear entertainment system with a fold-out 8-inch LCD screen. Infrared controls for the remote. On the back of the console, you have dual cup holders, a 12 volt power point. You've also got auxiliary climate controls with fan speed, panel distribution, and temperature. 
There are no fold-out cup holders on the floor of the console, however. You do have seat back map pockets. All right, there are several ways to open the lift gate. You can press the button on the instrument panel. On the rear portion of the glass or the gate, you do have two membrane switches, one marked glass. Pressing that will release the glass, and then you have your gate release under the Lincoln Star logo. You can also use the key fob. Here we'll release the glass first by pressing the right button. And then opening the flipper glass is using the handle beneath the wiper. It allows easy loading of large long items through the um, the rear and to open the main lift gate we'll just press the left button on the key fob and it will automatically open even with a standard wheelbase the luggage area while small is nicely designed with a flat floor minimal wheelhouse intrusions and contains a 12 volt power point power liftgate controls and the power fold controls which makes folding the third row seats incredibly simple small storage area for your jack and tools there's your 12 volt power point cargo capacity is 18.1 cubic feet in this configuration folding the third row seats is easy by uh, releasing the head restraints and then we'll just press the fold buttons on the power fold controls, which will then fold the seats into the floor. Once the third row seats are folded, your, incre your cargo capacity increases to 54.4 cubic feet, which is a gain of 36.3 cubic feet. 
and then we're going to go ahead and fold the second row seats into their cargo mode. That increases your total capacity to 103.3 cubic feet. That is a gain of 48.9 cubic feet, almost 50 cubic feet extra. Just a ton of storage space in the navigator. And then lifting the third row seats is as easy as pressing these buttons. And they go right back into their seating. Lock the head restraints in place and you'll be good to go. Kind of need two hands to do it though. And closing the lift gate is easy, just pressing the button in the, lift, the trim panel. Alright, and this does conclude our in-depth walk around look at the 2008 Lincoln Navigator. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.